Um, I, I want to thank the committee for coming here today. Um, I, first of all, I want to thank uh, my opposition counterparts from both the Bloc and the New Democratic Party uh, who recognize the urgency of this, of this meeting. I certainly know, as does everyone on this committee, that we were working in, in progress of having an outsourcing uh, study, um, a, as it were. Uh, I recognize I'm still relatively new to the committee, but uh, we were going along with that outsourcing uh, study, um, and, and I certainly think that it was going along very well and that uh, it was providing us with lots of good information as to uh, the role of consulting firms within government. But as everyone is aware on this call, we received new information over the, the, the winter break. I'm sure you're all aware that on January 4th, CBC published, an, uh, this year I should say, CBC published an article showing that the current government has spent over 30 times more in government contracts with McKinsey, and that's of course the company we are here to uh, discuss their relationship with the government here today and company than under the previous administration. At least that's what we thought until January 17th, the Globe and Mail published an article stating that the actual value of government contracts with McKinsey since 2015, since this government has been in power, actually amounted to 101.4 million, much, much higher than reported. In addition to that, media also stated that the company's connections with McKinsey have also landed the firm a significant number of sole source contracts and that of the valued 101.4 million in 23 different government contracts, only three, three out of 23, only three out of 23 uh, were open sourced and the other were 20 were sole sourced and me coming from a public service background at Global Affairs, um, I just recognize how completely unacceptable that is uh, in, in terms of government standards. And this is all happening. This is happening at a time where Canadians are, are struggling. In the words of my leader, Pierre Polyev, Canadians are currently struggling to cope with a 40-year high inflation 1.5 million Canadians visited food banks in a single month. That's just shameful. The cost of a mortgage payment is now a bigger portion of a paycheck than ever before. And some Canadians are going to food banks asking for help with medically assisted dying because they can't afford to live. So this waste is happening at a time when Canadians are struggling. And then I want to take a minute and talk about our, our, our public service, a public service that I proudly served in for close to 15 years, that we are having in place a shadow government because of these consulting firms, which is not only creating a lack of agency within the public service, demoralizing the public service, but also creating incredible waste because we can see from our studies here at OGO and our, uh, the, within the media and with the public servants that have appeared at this committee that they are not even sure as to what they are doing, what the objectives are of their divisions, uh, departments. And as a result of that, these expensive consultants are being brought in in an effort to fix it. But guess what? Studies are showing that they're not even fixing it. So I would even potentially estimate that we are spending three times what is necessary of a high morale, high functioning public service. And again, my leader addressed this last week when he said that we want to move work actually internally to the public service. We want a well-recruited, well-trained, high retention public service. But these consultants are, are getting in the way of that. So we have a situation where we have significant expenditures with this single company, in addition to many others, but the focus here is McKinsey. We have a shadow government, which is operating, and we have Canadians 
who simply can't afford it at this time. They simply can't afford it. But uh, there's, there's more. We have to wonder whose idea was this? Whose idea was this to start this relationship with McKinsey? Well, guess what? Their former lead, Dominique Barton, is the former global managing partner for McKinsey and led a 30-year career with the firm. While he was working with McKinsey, he was closely connected with the Liberal government and served as the economic advisor to Justin Trudeau prior to his retirement from the company in 2018. Shortly after he retired from McKinsey, he was then appointed by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to serve as Canada's ambassador to China. Let me tell you, going through the Foreign Service, that, that is a plum post and not easy to get. But, you know, it, so it's evident where this, these ideas come from, where the idea to bring in McKinsey came from. It came from the very top. And guess what? I'm not the only one who sees it. The individuals who signed that letter to ask for this meeting today aren't the only ones who see it. The media sees this as well. I'm going to quote from the Ottawa bureau chief of the Globe and Mail, Bob Fife's uh, uh, um, comments on CTV's question period this past Sunday. He, these are the words out of Mr. Fife's mouth. They got these contracts. They got them because Dominique Barton is a buddy of the prime minister. Bob Fife's words, not mine. And he goes on to say, uh, say more that this is what it looks like. Uh, he also said that um, Dominic Barton advised him on the infrastructure bank, which also, by the way, has, has been a flop. So it's no secret where these ideas are coming from. They're coming from the top. And they're coming from the top. And they're permeating all throughout government because we're seeing more and more media stories where more departments within the Canadian government are implemented are, impl are implementing uh, McKenzie as part of what should be solutions but we're seeing it's not we're seeing this in defense we're seeing this in immigration we're seeing this in health we're seeing this in different agencies under under industry I, th this is not a single department issue this is coming from the top with its tentacles permeating throughout government. So it's very clear where this is coming from, who, who had this idea in the first place to bring McKenzie in. But not only has McKenzie brought in, been brought in at the top and at this magnitude, why, why would the prime minister decide to work with a company that has such a questionable ethical background? You know, McKinsey was under fire this past year over their contracts with the government of France and campaign financing for President Emmanuel Macron spending on contracts with McKinsey more than doubled in the president's first term. And they are under investigation for false campaign financing for Macron's 2017 campaign. Supposedly, some McKinsey consultants were working as unpaid volunteers for the campaign. So prosecutors are investigating whether this entailed a hidden campaign expense and if the firm enjoyed special access and treatment and afterwards when winning lucrative contracts with the government. In the U.S., they've also recently faced massive criticisms. Although it was Purdue Pharma, American pharmaceutical company, that pleaded guilty to criminal charges in 2019 over their role in the OxyContin and opioid crisis, it was McKinsey and company that developed a strategy uh, involved with driving sales of addictive painkillers, even as public outrage grew over widespread doses. McKinsey advised the company to turbocharge OxyContin sales, counter efforts by drug enforcement agents to reduce o opioid use, and were part of a team that looked how to counter the emotional messages from mothers with teenagers that overdosed on the drug. Shameful. A partner at the McKinsey consulting firm was also criminally charged in the United States with insider trading ahead of Goldman Sachs agreement to buy fintech lender Green Sky Inc. for $2.24 billion. Puneet um, Dixie, an, an executive with McKinsey, exploited information he gained about his client Goldman Sachs pending takeover to buy profitable call options in Green Sky. He had a leading role advising Goldman on the deal after learning that a deal was imminent, bought 2,500 call options in two days before the announcement. He ultimately netted about $450,000. He was sentenced for 24 months in prison for two counts of securities fraud. But it's worse than that. It is more significant than that. 
The engines for many of the missiles fired at the Ukraine war with Russia were manufactured by a massive Russian state-owned enterprise, enterprise called Roster, Ro, excuse me, Rostec. Rostec and executives for that company hired the global consulting giant McKinsey & Co. in recent years for advice. This is the same time the firm was carrying out sensitive national security contracts for the Defense Department and the U.S. intelligence, intelligence community. This one is very public and possibly the most disgraceful. In 2018, McKinsey and Company's retreat in China took place only seven kilometers from an internment camp holding thousands of ethnic Uyghurs. This was just a week after a United Nations committee had denounced the mass detentions and urged China to stop. In August 2000 of 2018, VEB Bank, which is owned by the Russian state, known to be intertwined with Russian intelligence and under United States sanctions, hired McKinsey to develop its business strategy. In 2015, McKenzie published an internal report on the public reception of new policies in Saudi Arabia. In the report, they demonstrated that negative sentiment for out, far outweighed positive reactions on social media, and that three people were driving the conversation on t Twitter. The writer Khalid Al-Kami, Al Al uh, Mr. Abu Aziz, dis dissident living in Canada, and an anonymous user who went by Ahmad. After the report was issued, Mr. Al-Kami was arrested. Mr. Abdullah Ziz had two of his brothers imprisoned by the Saudi government official by Saudi government officials. The anonymous account was shut down. The Gupta family, a wealthy family from uh, India with business ties in South Africa, has strategically placed corrupted individuals in various South African government utilities and infrastructure sectors. It is alleged that McKinsey was complicit in this corruption by using the Guptas to obtain consulting uh, con My apologies. Um, the uh, conversation on Twitter, the... Uh, uh, sorry, I was on to the last one. Um, Trillin was a paid commission for the for facilitating the business for McKinsey. Um, pardon me, I'm just having a technical small. T Thank you so much. Um, all right. Uh, Trillin was a paid commission for facilitating the business for McKinsey. South Africa's National, National Prosecuting Authority concluded in early 2018 that the payments to McKinsey and its local business partner, Trillian, were illegal, involving crimes such as fraud, fraud theft, corruption, and money laundering, uh, Mr. Chair. So not only did this idea come from the very top, from the prime minister, and I, I would also suspect actually his two closest advisors to permeate this, this corporation throughout government. Why are they choosing to get into bed with such an ethically, not only actually ethically corrupt company, but also possibly criminally criminally as well in, in, in many nations. And all of these examples that I've given Mr. Chair are from after 2015. All of these ethical violations, which I've listed here today. So in a, in a time period where the government had time to be aware as to these ethical violations and yet still decide not only to continue the relationship, but even deepen the relationship having uh, the relationship um, develop. So we've talked about the, uh, the sole source, the shadow government, uh, the amount of money that was spent, that yet given the state of Canadians, we've talked about whose idea was this? Why is it permeating government? Why would the prime minister in this government continue to work with such an ethically bankrupt company? But then the final question is, Mr. Chair, Who's pulling the strings? Who's really in charge of Canada? Canadians go to the ballot box in the hope that they will elect a democratic, uh, democratically functioning government, a government that will consider their interests and act on the interests of Canadians, those who brought them to power. But yet, the initial CBC article from January 4th, 2023, indicates that the Department of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada 
who was contracted with McKinsey and the most indicated that in the article that two public servants explained that many policy decisions were actually decided by McKinsey rather than public servants. They also say these policy decisions were made without public interest as their top priority. The sources in the CBC article also expressed significant concerns over McKinsey's impact on the decision to increase, increase immigration targets. Immigration targets, something that has a profound effect on every single aspect of our, of our country. Our housing situation, our healthcare situation, it's not the government that's actually determining this, Mr. Chair. It's, it's McKinsey, as is evidenced by this article. McKinsey's global head, Dominique Barton, chaired the Advisory Council on Economic Growth in 2016 that recommended immigration targets of 455,000 permanent immigrants per year. Isn't that funny? Isn't that just the number we just saw the Minister of Immigration brag about in the last month? Despite concerns from the minister at the time, the recommendations were implemented by IRCC. So it, it, again, th this government is, they are not calling the shots. They are having the shots called by a third party source, by an external source. And who knows where that third party source is getting their, uh, their I ideas from, Mr. Chair. So as a result of all of these different different pieces as to why McKinsey's relationship and implication with this government is so, so wrong on so many levels, levels, excuse me, as I have just communicated. We, the members of the opposition, have come here today with a motion, with a motion that we are going to now present to the committee, and I will now read it in the record, uh, into the record in English. that the committee undertake a study pursuant to standing orders 1083C uh, italics 3 and italics 9 regarding government consulting contracts awarded to McKinsey and company by the government of Canada or any crown corporation since November 2015, examining their effectiveness, management and operation, including the value and service received by the government provided that A, the committee schedule meetings to receive witness testimony, uh, the prime, president of the treasury board, the minister of public services and procurement and the deputy prime minister, minister of finance, minister of national defense, minister of immigration, refugees and citizenship, minister of health and minister of public safety, each be invited to appear for at least two hours. And the parties shall each provide to the clerk of the committee as soon as possible, their preliminary lists of witnesses who the chair shall schedule in a manner fair to all parties. The committee report forthworth to the House that it recommends that the Auditor General be called upon to conduct as soon as possible a performance and value for money audit of the contracts awarded to McKinsey and Company since November 2015 by any department agency or crown corporation. The committee order each department agency or crown corporation which entered into a contract including a memorandum of understanding or other agreement with the McKinsey and Company since November 2015 to provide the clerk of committee in both official languages and with three weeks of the adoption of this order and notwithstanding any disclosure agreement which might be applicable. Copies of one request for tenders or other procurement requests related to contracts awarded to McKinsey and Company. Two, tenders, bids, proposals, or other applications received in retrospect of those procurements requests. Three, contracts entered into, including any amendments thereto. Four, all correspondence and electronic communications, including emails, text messages, uh, message app communications and handwritten notes pertaining to these contracts. Five statements of work performed by McKinsey and Company under each contract. Six all work product provided by McKinsey and Company under each contract. Seven invoices provided by McKinsey and Company and eight records of all payments made to McKinsey Company. Nine the hours and or daily rates McKinsey and Company charge for each employee working on all respective contracts the company has received since November 2015 and 10 the names of project managers and or project authorities from McKinsey and Company on all respective contracts and projects the company received since November 2015. D the committee order McKinsey and Company to provide the clerk 
to the clerk of the committee within three weeks of the adoption of this order and notwithstanding any disclosure agreements which might be applicable with respect to each contract entered into with a department agency or crown corporation of the government of Canada since November 2015 copies of one all records referred to in paragraph C to all records concerning the details and descriptions of work performed uh, under each contract, three timesheets documenting work done for each respective contract for the hourly and or daily rate McKinsey and Company charged the government or Crown Corporation for each respect, uh, respective contract awarded to them since 2015. Five, the names of project managers and or project authorities from McKinsey and Company assigned to each project from a contract with the government or Crown Corporation since November 2015. And six, all records concerning subcontracts issued by McKinsey and Company in relation to each contract, including tenders, contracts, or memoranda of understanding, including an amendments there to invoices, payments, and evaluations. Uh, seven, all correspondence and electronic communications, including emails, text messages, message app communications, and handwritten notes pertaining to these contracts. And eight, the complete client list of all organizations McKinsey and Company has worked with since November 2015. E, that evidence and documents received as part of this study be also considered in the committee's study uh, on the outsourcing of the contracts. You know, Mr. Chair, before I conclude, I will say that um, I, I was, I, I really stood by the words of my leader when he uh, called this out last week, and I was just as pleased to see the Prime Minister's response, the Prime Minister's public response, that he is willing to get to the bottom of this. He's willing to get to the bottom of this. And in fact, the two ministers um, for whom I uh, I have much respect for, Minister Fortier and Minister Jazek, uh, have been charged with this and will take responsibility to uh, work with us in an effort to get to the bottom of this. I, I'll say, uh, Mr. Chair, I, I'm very concerned we're going to see another task force or study out of these two ministers. I don't want to see that, Mr. Speaker. We saw that with the recent whistleblowing legislation that uh, despite the report of this committee uh, recommendation seven years ago, which was not implemented by the Trudeau government, it wasn't until a private member's bill from the block came forward where the government decided to do something, yet something ineffectual. So in my opinion, uh, Mr. Chair, that won't fly. Um, we, we need them to be accountable to this committee because Canadians are looking for transparency. Canadians uh, want answers. They, uh, and, and they deserve answers. So I, I absolutely, given the prime minister's willingness and given the willingness of, um, of, of those ministers to cooperate, I expect that, uh, that this, this committee, the members of the government on this committee, um, will will be pleased to uh, to to work with us in tandem as well to really get uh, to 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 the bottom of this. I, I really think um, that we're we're all um, look, looking forward to this and to these um, these answers, which will be questioned, which will be responded to. Excuse me, as a result of um, these uh, these these questions that I have uh, brought forward here um, today. Um, parce que, comme j'ai déjà dit, les, caisses, les Canadiens... As I already said, Canadians have questions. Canadians have a hard, are having a hard time dealing with inflation. Millions of Canadians have visited food banks. And now, more Canadians than ever are using food banks. Some people are heading to food banks to get medication because they can't afford them otherwise. They can't make ends meet. This is extremely unfortunate, Mr. Chairman. My leader, Pierre Poliev, is talking about how Canadians are suffering. And in the meantime, this is a good time for Liberals. It's a good time to be a friend of the Liberal government, and yet it's a really tough time for Canadians. So why have the Liberals spent so much? Who is pulling the strings, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chair, so in my in final conclusion, I will say Canadians want answers. 
relative to uh, what I have brought forward here today. Canadians are struggling and this government is driving up the cost of living. Meanwhile, Liberals and their connected friends have never had it so good. So why did they spend so much? Whose idea was this and who's pulling the strings? Thank you very much, Mr. President.